Okay, welcome back. So this is part two of healing my solar plexus chakra. And my guides have given me a little bit of a prep saying that this is good right where I am. I'm where I'm supposed to be and that it's okay to want more. And that's going to be the process. So try to blend with them again and speak from a higher perspective now about what it is I'm not able to sit with. Hmm. I just see the word shame in my mind. So, Kelly, we want you to sit with this feeling of feeling ashamed because it is sort of foundational to the issue of your solar plexus that you are not able to sit with. Who wants to sit with that? That's a horrible feeling. What a horrible feeling to feel ashamed. And why do people feel ashamed? Where does that come from? You're embarrassed. Um, You feel like you are not worthy. There's an aspect of it. You feel like um, dirty. You feel not good enough. Like you, you don't offer quality um, work. And this, of course, came from some point when you were young. But the thing is that it is definitely very much a DNA thing where it came down your family line. There was shame in your parents' families to some degree and on one side more than another. And it's time for this to heal. It's time for this to heal. So we're going to sit with this feeling of shame and you know, the origin of it, it's foggy. It's, it's a little bit obscure. It's, it's hard to pinpoint where it originated, but it was in the past generations ago. I don't think it's really all that helpful to figure out where it began. It had to do with um, being a lower caste you know, not being one of the ruling caste or respected um, levels of society. It was more of a servant level and the dirty level. And uh, people were able to treat you terribly. Ten more minutes, Riri. So, and that feeling is, you know, we I, I heard something recently on YouTube that said, um, oh, it was it was a channeling of Nefertiti. Was she like an Egyptian queen? I think that's her name. And she said that she was punished by the ruling class. Even though she was a queen, she wanted to give the people power, but the ruling class wanted to keep them like slavery mindset. And when she tried to give them more autonomy, she was punished and she was treated like a slave. But she knew in her heart that she was going back to God and that she was a goddess in her soul. And that helped her feel good about herself while she was being treated as a slave. And so we can, what we can do as we process this shame is intentionally send that understanding to all of the slaves and all of the people who have experienced being of a lower caste. We can send to them intentionally Um, with our hearts open the understanding that they are an aspect of God as well and that their soul is learning humility, service and um, and gaining strength because the slavery lifestyle is, is hard labor, right? And in hard labor you use your body a lot whereas when you're a part of the ruling caste you can become a victim of gluttony and laziness and um, vanity and you know so on either end of the spectrum it's not necessarily a pleasant experience to be what you are are the opposite of you know balance is really where that the happiness is most likely to happen so let's send out to the slaves of history because time isn't real so let's send let's send love to the slave mentality and um, shame mentality. 
So I think I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to, and I'm not going to stop recording because uh, I invite anyone else to do this with me. I'm just sitting in my heart. I feel like intuitively that is where I want to focus, where I project from. And green just immediately came to me and I'm opening my heart, just like making a hole in my chest and just pouring out love, sending it to uh, the collective consciousness of the shame mentality and of the slavery mentality, just sending love and grace and peace, first of all, to like comfort the miserable lifestyle that is having zero freedom, even if it's just in your mind, feeling like you don't have freedom, sending love to that, to comfort that first. And I feel immediately a receiving back of gratitude. I I can feel those people receiving that comfort and exhaling. Like I can feel them just smiling and the, the light pink color is coming to their auras and their energetic field. And now I'm sending to them an empowering message that says that this soul experience of hard labor, of finding that inner still place inside, which is maybe the only place they have any free will as um, a respite of calm and safety and joy even, and that they always are available. It's, it doesn't, it's available to everyone, you know, I don't know about mind control situations, but to the slavery and the shame group, it's absolutely available to be able to sing and think about all the gospel music that's come from the black tradition and the, the physical fitness that's come for the black tradition, you know, um, where they're now, and these descendants that are living now can be athletes, you know, like, like, excelling in athletics because of the strong history of physical um, work that they that they've experienced and their DNA has taken on and passed down like now it's a reward to have done all that physical work right so I'm sending this again through my heart I'm sending out this thought to the collective consciousness of shame and slavery because they're kind of separate um you have power. First of all, you had past lives as kings and queens. You will have future lives of wealthy and comfortable being entities and lifestyles. And you are magnanimous because your soul is part of all that is. And you are experiencing an aspect of this human experience that is necessary for appreciating the opposite and also it is all good it is not def is not better to be a master than to be a slave because the master has his own struggles and sufferings it is just an aspect this life is simply experiencing different aspects so that you can have a balanced perspective of the whole and one day all of this will build an infrastructure to have a perspective about the whole that allows you to ascend and transcend this physical experience to forgive everything and let it go and move on because at one day when one day when we have all right 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 when we have all of these opposite experiences, we'll be ready to graduate onto the next level of learning in this spiritual evolution that exists as the universe. And know that you can always find joy in your heart, that God is with you. He's, he's a quiet voice, but if you do seek it, you'll find it and it will bring you comfort. And you don't need everything to heal in order to find relief. You just need a little bit of an improvement to feel joy. You know, if you go from like depressed to feeling bored, 
there's a little bit of an improvement there and that's just enough to give you hope and faith that things will improve and that you feel a little bit lighter. It's kind of an ex- example of how um, where we're headed as humans is not linear. It's multidimensional, which means that it um, it it doesn't go from A to B. It it kind of um, does, your your logical mind can't can't see ahead what the what the answer is. And you have to step into the non-physical, the unknowing, and just receive the answer before you can logically explain it. And so, and so we say, thank you, because this was a huge gift and blessing to the shadow side of slavery. And it will heal a part of you, Kelly, as you are stepping into your day and you can release this and begin to experience the healing and the life that is more empowered and balanced and compassionate as a result of this. So we will let you go at this time and we send out guides to help integrate this message. Peace be with you. Namaste.